Hi everyone and welcome to learn A-level biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to be going through the second option of the respiration required practical using dehydrogenase and yeast. So first of all the aim of this investigation is we're looking at whether a named variable and in this case I'm going to go for temperature has an effect on the rate of um, respiration and AQA specify has to be in a single celled organism, hence we'll be using yeast. So a bit of background then, it's all around the enzyme dehydrogenase and this naturally occurs in the yeast and what it does is catalyze the reaction of removing hydrogen from coenzymes and the carbon compounds in the different stages of respiration. Now that hydrogen would normally be picked up by a coenzyme such as NAD or if it's in the final stage oxidative phosphorylation it's actually NADH which is having the hydrogen removed and that's then split into the electron for the electron transport chain and the proton for chemiosmosis. So that is how the dehydrogenase enzyme is naturally functioning in the yeast. What we're going to be doing in this investigation, though, to track how quickly that enzyme is um, catalyzing all of these reactions and therefore an indicator of rate of respiration, we're going to add an artificial hydrogen acceptor, and that is TTC. So this is a redox indicator because when it is oxidized, TTC is colorless. When it picks up the hydrogens and becomes reduced, it starts to form a red precipitate. So we'll be able to see a colour change when all of this above is happening. So lastly, we said the variable that we're going to investigate is the effect of temperature on enzymes. Now this last point is almost identical to required practical one for AQA, because that is what you had to do. Vary one um, independent variable, to look at the effect of that on enzyme rates of reactions. So temperature, as it increases, will have more kinetic energy. That kinetic energy enables the substrate and the enzymes to move faster. Therefore, it increases the likelihood of successful collisions between those enzymes and substrates. So we'd get more enzyme substrate complexes and therefore the rate of reaction would increase. So based on that background knowledge then, the prediction or hypothesis I'm going to go with is the yeast and TTC, so when we mix those together, will turn red faster, indicating a faster rate of reaction as the temperature increases. So the way I'm going to um, experiment this is I'm going to use five temperatures and I'm going to use these five here, 20 degrees C, 30, 40, 45, 50. And I'm going to control it by using thermostatic water baths. So setting the temperature of the water um, at five different temperatures in five different water baths. Before starting the experiment, though, I'm going to get two test tubes, one to have a solution of the sugar and yeast and then a separate solution for the TTC. Place that in the water bath for a minimum of five minutes. When the five minutes is up, I'm gonna come back with a thermometer and check the temperature of the two solutions to make sure that they have now reached the temperature of the water bath. Because if we're saying that we are testing um, the rate of reaction at 40 degrees C, let's say, we need to make sure that both of those solutions are at 40 degrees C before we start the reaction. So we'll leave them for a minimum of five minutes before we check to see if they have both equilibrated to the temperature of the water bath. So other things we need to get ready then is a stop clock to measure the time taken. To judge the end point, we said TTC turns red. However, you're unlikely to get that really dark red that we can see at the top of this paint colour chart because the yeast solution is a creamy yellowy beige colour to start with. So if you mix creamy yellowy beige with red, you actually end up with pink. So I've starred that, this particular shade of pink, to be consistent, I'm going to say when the colour reaches that point, that's when I'm going to stop um, timing. So I'm standardising the method, we'll stop the stop clock at the same end point for all the reactions. I've got a thermometer handy to check my water bath um, and the temperature of the two test tubes is equilibrated. 
and then I'm going to mix them together. So at this stage, I've mixed together the yeast and glucose solution with the TTC, and I've quickly taken it out of the water bath just to show you that at the beginning, there isn't actually any pink at all. It doesn't match any of those colours. So I'll then start the stopwatch as soon as I've mixed them together, leave the solution in the water bath. Now I did actually use thermostatic ones, but because you can't see into them very well, I've also done one in a beaker as a water bath so that you can see the colour changes. So at the moment, this is at 30 degrees and it's up to 15 minutes, 36 seconds. And comparing it, it's still not quite at the shade of pink that I have highlighted. So we'd still need to leave it a little bit longer. At the moment, it's somewhere in between these two. So just to show you then, here is the um, whole reaction. So I've mixed together the yeast and glucose, and we have to provide glucose because that is one of the substrates for respiration. The TTC is already in there. Now you'll notice that periodically I'm stirring it, and that's because you can see on the time lapse quite clearly that the yeast does start to settle to the bottom if you don't stir. So we end up with lots of the um, single-celled organism yeast starts to sink towards the bottom, and the sugary solution and TTC will remain at the top. So we need to mix it so that that doesn't occur. Um, I've also taken it out, you can see periodically, just to check against the colour sheet. And that's what you'll keep doing until you've decided that the colour of your solution has matched this. Now for me, as I said, I get to 15 minutes and it's not quite there. Um, I'm going to show you what the final endpoint should look like. So the final endpoint we can see compared to the start colour and the end, this is how pink it did go eventually. Um, it would go more pink than that, but I stopped it when it got to pink Nevada 4. That's the colour that I was using on that pink paint chart. So that's our end point. When the reaction gets to the point that the solution is always that colour, that's standardised our method. So here were my results for each of those. We can see that the time taken did decrease and therefore the rate of reaction decreased as well. Now I did the rate of reaction as a thousand divided by time simply because if I did one divided by time, I ended up with values um, that were 10 to the minus three. So for easier pattern interpretation, I did it as a thousand divided by time, so it's clearer to see the pattern. Now I'm not gonna do a statistic in this video. The statistic you would be doing, because we're comparing two continuous variables, increasing temperature, increasing time, you'd be doing Spearman's rank to see is there a correlation, positive or negative, between these two variables. Now if you do want to see how to do that, I'll link my Spearman's rank video up the top here so you can go and have a look. But for now, we're going to move on. So the conclusion then would be that the rate of reaction did increase as the temperature increases. There were limitations. Even though I used that colour chart to standardise the endpoint, it is still subjective. When you did this experiment, I'm sure you found that you had to ask each other, you might have debated a bit, has it reached that colour? I'm not sure. So it is still subjective, even though we put measures in to try and standardise it. So ideally, if you could use a colorimeter, that would then give you a quantitative result and remove the subjective nature. There were also issues with being able to see the colour change because your samples had to remain in the water bath. So you had to keep taking the test tube out of the water bath in order to see it. And in doing that, the temperature might drop. So there were some issues there. So ideally, we'd want to have a see-through thermostatic water bath to be able to see the colour change without having to take the test tube out of the water bath. So a couple of questions then that could come up. Um, why must both solutions be left in the water bath for five minutes before the reaction? Why did the TTC turn red? And at which stage of respiration will dehydrogenase be removing hydrogen? So for the first one, we put them in for five minutes so that the yeast and TTC both equilibrate to the test temperature. 
TTC is turning red because the dehydrogenase naturally occurring within yeast will catalyze the reaction of removing hydrogen from NADH and TTC will then pick up that hydrogen. And that reduced the TTC, so it goes from its oxidated um, colourless form to its reduced red precipitate. Finally, at which state of respiration will dehydrogenase be removing hydrogen? So NAD is made in glycolysis, link reaction and the Krebs cycle, so all of those stages. But it's also used in oxidative phosphorylase to remove the hydrogens from all of the reduced coenzymes. So that is it for required practical nine, focusing on the effect of temperature on dehydrogenase in respiration in yeast. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, then please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to keep up to date on all the latest videos.